We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this moment. We thank you because you love us so much. As we are going to study from your word, we ask you, Lord, guide us and teach us today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, friends, our topic today is modern magic, miracles, and the occult. Modern magic, miracles, and the occult. On May 13th, that was in 1917, three children, that was Lucia Santos, who was just 10 years, and Francisco Mato, who was 9, and Jacinta Mato, who was 7. This is the actual photograph of them. This was Francisco, then this was Lucia Santos. This is the actual photograph of these people. When they were tending the sheep in a place called Covada Ira, near the place or the city of Fatuma, that is in, in Portugal, suddenly they saw a flash of lightning and soon, when they were seeing, a beautiful shining woman appeared near the tree. Now the children were terrified, they were terrified, but the shining woman said, do not be afraid, don't be afraid of me, I am from heaven. Now Lucia asked the woman what she wanted. And the woman then asked her and her friends to come back the same place the 13th day of each month in, for the next six months. Now Lucia asked the children if they would offer themselves, this woman asked the, the children if they would ask, offer themselves to endure all the suffering that she might bring upon them. Regardless of uh, in the preparation of those countless sins that the people have been having, by which they will have offended God. As now, they were trying to say they will pay for their sins at the conversion, and they will pray for the whole world for the conversion of sinners. By the way, reparation, or it is payment of sin, they were supposed to suffer many things, so that they will pay for their sins and the sins of the world. But the question is, who paid the penalty for sin? Friends, it's Jesus. But this woman asked the children if they would help in paying for the sins of the world. And the children said they, they, they were willing to suffer many things so that they can pay or atone for the sins of the world. Then the shining woman said, you will have to, have to suffer much, but the grace of God will strengthen you and will comfort you. Then the children saw the rays of light proceeding from her hand. And the shining woman concluded her visit by admon admonishing the children to say the rosary every day to earn world peace and to hasten the end of World War I. Then she disappeared. Now, the next month, the children returned along with some few curious adults. After waiting for some time, suddenly she she, the, the woman came and pointed to the sky and said, Look, comes the shining lady. This, the child said, Look, the shining lady has come. Then the, the boughs of the oak tree bent down their branches, and then even though no human hand was pushing them down, after the shining woman had disappeared, the adults were sure that the children had been conversing with none other than the Virgin Mary. Now, as you can imagine, the word spread like wildfire. The next month, that was in July, on July 13th, on July 13th, the 13th day, that is in July, 5,000 people went out to the place called Covada Era to see this shining woman. Now, this time, the woman shared a secret with the three children, which she told them not to tell to anyone. A secret was called the secret of Fatima. Now it's not; it's no longer a secret now, by the way, because everybody knows it. Now she promised them that on October 13 of that year, that is 1917, that she would work a miracle whereby all might see and believe. However, before we look at the miracle, let's go to the Bible and establish some facts about modern magic miracle and the occult. So she promised them that the miracle will be in October 13, 1917. 
Now today we are we are seeing a flood of supernatural events, miracles, miraculous healings, uh, visions, apparitions of Mary, and Mary appears to people, and other saints, and many other supernatural phenomena. Now, what do all these signs and miracles mean? And where are they coming from? Would it be that the devil is masquerading in some of the apparitions of Mary and other saints? Let's answer that question. Before we answer that question, let's answer this question. Are all miracles from God? Or can the devil also work miracles? Is all healing from God or can the devil also heal? We are going to find out tonight that the devil also can work miracles. He can work also miracles. Now, two supernatural powers are at work in our world. God's power and the devil's power. Now, both powers are working miracles. God works miracles, but so does the devil also. So God heals people, but also the devil does. So God gives vision, and also the devil does. You remember that the devil gave a vision to Jesus in Matthew chapter 4. Now, since he gave the vision to Jesus, then we know that he can give a vision to anyone. And the question, of course, is which of these two forces is behind the flood of miracles, the appearings of Mary and the visions of today? Now, we are going to find out tonight that these that of these two forces, one is behind the flood of miracles of today. So we are going to see which one is behind all the miracles of today. Another question is, how can we know whether a miracle is from God or from the devil? Now we are going to see tonight that there are certain biblical tests that we can use that can help us to know whether the miracle is from God or is from the devil. First of all, are there counterfeit gifts of the Spirit? The answer is yes. The Bible tells us in First Peter, in Second Peter, chapter two, verse number one, that prophets and teachers, you see, they were gifts. But now the Bible says, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. You see, prophets and teachers were gifts given to the church. But here we have counterfeits of those gifts, the duplicates, false prophets and false teachers. Actually, the devil has made a counterfeit of every gift that God has given, every gift of the Spirit. They are false teachers, false prophets, false healings, false miracles, and false tongues, and many more false things. Now, this is a huge, there is a huge counterfeit on the last one, that is false tongues today. Do these counterfeits look false? For example, if I was to develop a counterfeit of 50,000 Uganda shillings, I will make possible, I will make it possible it will look like just the original so that it can deceive the people. So, it should be like the real so that it can deceive the people. So the more it looks like the real, the more effective it can deceive a people. Now that's the same. Don't miss this. The devil is a master counterfeit. He has had over 6,000 years to practice counterfeiting. And it's impossible with your human senses and with your eyes to tell whether or not a miracle is from God or from the devil. So, it is closely that the counterfeit will look just like the origin. It will re resemble the genuine. That the only way you can know that the, the true from the false is by what book? By the Bible. That's right. So the Bible, Christ wants us to beware of counterfeits. Let's go and read it in Matthew chapter 7, verse number 15. Matthew 7, verse 15. The Bible says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly there are ravening walls. You see, friends, the false prophets come in sheep's cloth. They come in sheep's cloth. Have you seen that wolf? They come in sheep's... In the New Testament, you see, friends, the sheep is a symbol of the follower of Jesus Christ. And these false prophets are, come looking like just the sheep. 
He said, Beware all false prophets. Now, this wolf, the wolf here, is not disguising even itself very well. The false prophets will hide much better than even that. In other words, they will look like Christians. They profess to follow Jesus. They are inside the fold, the church, the Christian church, but behind the Christian covering, they are under the spirit of the wolf, who is Satan. I personally believe that many of them don't even know the spirit that is controlling them. They will believe themselves to be spirit-filled Christians. Matthews will be deceived by the miracles of these people that are working miracles. Why will these false prophets deceive many people? Let's read the answer from Matthew 24, verse number 24. The Bible says, For there shall arise false, false Christ and false prophets, and shall shew, or shall show great wonders and great signs and wonders, in so much that if it were possible, they will deceive the very elect. They are working great signs and wonders and miracles. Many people think that every miracle comes from God. That's one of Satan's deceptions. People think that all miracles come from God. The Bible says that even false prophets will work miracles. Now how can we know whether a miracle is from God or from the devil? You can, how can we know anyway whether the healing or the vision is from God or from the devil. You can only know by the Bible and the Bible alone. The Bible gives us some tests. We find them in Isaiah chapter 8 verse number 20. We are going to mark these two tests tonight. There are more but I will give you, we will give, mark down these only two for today. Let's read Isaiah 8 verse number 20. The Bible says to the law, that's the Ten Commandments, and to the testimony, that's the rest of the Bible, if they don't speak according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. If they have no light in them, then they have darkness. And that's the spirit of Satan, the spirit of the wolf. The wolf is controlling them. So we have only two tests. They should have to keep the Ten Commandments and also they should follow the rest of the Bible. So if they, the preachers, if they, the healers, those who claim to have God's power, if they do not follow the teachings of God's word, then there is no light in them. Let's start with the testimony or the Bible. The testimony, that's the Bible. That's a broad test. The Bible itself. There are many Bible doctrines that we can use to test these faith healers. One of the examples is the state of man in death. What do the faith healers teach about the state of man in death? This is important because we learn that most of the, the false religions are deceived on the state of man in death. Do they believe that the dead live on? Do they believe that the soul is immortal? Or that the one can speak to the dead? Do they believe that? Or do they believe that when you die, you don't really die. Now here again, we have what the Bible teaches about the state of man in death. Let's review. The Bible says that the dead are asleep. Number two, the dead are in the grave. And number three, the dead know not anything. And number four, the dead do not return to visit their home. Now that's what the Bible teaches about the state of man in death. Based on this biblical fact, let me ask you. How many people are burning in hellfire today? It's only zero. It's zero. Absolutely zero. Christ teaches in Matthew 13 verse 37 up to 50 that hellfire will burn at the end of the world. And we can add that to our list. They teach that hell is burning now. But we know that hell is not burning today. So someone probably is probably uh, is saying, is probably saying, well, what about the visions that people have in about hell? They have about hell. Have you ever heard that someone went into hell and God showed him the visions of hell? Now, who is giving these miracles or who is giving these visions? 
it must be Saturn because Jesus says that hellfire is not burning now. So, number one, we said the, the dead are asleep. Number two, the dead are in their grave. Number three, the dead do not know anything. And number four, the dead do not return to their home. And then we have seen that hell is not burning now. We will find out later when we have established this point. One thing is sure that the visions of hell are not being given by God. The being who claims to be Christ and gives people the visions of hell is the devil. Or one of his demons masquerading to look like Jesus. So we know that those visions are not from Jesus. Now there are many biblical teachings we can test people with. And those were just a few of the main ones. Another test we can use also is found in Isaiah chapter 8 verse number 20. To the law or to the Ten Commandments. It says to the law and to the testimony. So we know that to the law, that's the Ten to the Ten Commandments. If those faith healers, what the, the visionaries that those who heal people, those who do miracles, if they're not, they're not keeping God's law, then we know that they are not using God's power. We, we, we need to test them. Are they obeying God's law? If not, we know that they don't have the light of the truth in them. If they, the faith healer, is not teaching other people to obey the Ten Commandments, then they do not have the light of the truth. Let me ask you a dumb question. How many commandments are in the Ten Commandments? There are how many? There are ten. Almost every church in this city or everywhere, they think that you should keep nine commandments. But how many are they? They are ten. And the Bible tells us in James chapter 2 verse number 10 that for whosoever shall break or shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point is guilty of all. So if the faith healer, we are to test them by God's law. And if the faith healer is not keeping all the Ten Commandments, is not keeping all, including the Sabbath, if he is willfully breaking one of the Ten Commandments, then he is not using God's power. God's workers will keep his laws out of love for him. So don't miss this. Don't miss this. Any person who is living in willful disobedience to God's law is not using God's power. The Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit is only given and only given to those who obey God. A person who willfully disobey God does not have God's power. They may have power, yes, but that power is not from God. So any person who is living in willful disobedience of God is not using God's power. Here's a text to confirm that in Acts chapter 5, verse number 32. The Bible says, and we are his witnesses of those things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that do what? That obey him. Those who obey him. Here again are the two texts. To the law, that's the Ten Commandments, and to the testimony, that's the rest of the scripture. If they, the miracle workers, do not pass those two tests, then they are not speaking for God. Let's answer this question. Can the devil work miracles? Well, let's read the answer from the Bible in Revelation 16, verse number 13 up to 14. The Bible says, And I saw three unclean spirits like flogs, Come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophets. It says, For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and to the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So can the devil work miracles? Yes, the devil can work miracles. We have these three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon and of the beast and of the false prophet. Now why did they look like, they said they look like a frog? 
You see, friends, a frog uses its tongue to capture its prey. And today, much of churches, the church leaders, are using their tongues to deceive, to mislead, and to destroy souls. With their tongue, they preach lying doctrines of the devil. And the Bible says that a false witness will not go unpunished. And he who speaks lies shall perish. The Bible itself says lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. So God is a God of perfect truth and uprightness. He hates anything that is deceptive or something that is a lie. Those who would rather receive smooth and pleasing lies than the sharp truth of God's word will end up being laid astray at the end time. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 10 up to 12, says, Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved, and for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So at the end time, those who do not love truth enough to obey it and follow it, are going to be deceived by Satan's lies. He has a deadly trap for those, he has it prepared for those who don't love God's truth supremely. And incidentally, those dishonest souls who regularly lie and defraud others will be the first to fall into his deadly trap. There is a tongue speaking moving in most of the Christian churches of the land today. They speak in tongues. Not the Christian churches of today are being taken over by the frogs. They are being taken over by the frogs. And now tongues are now a manifestation or are now manifest in most of the commandment breaking churches of the world. But friends, it says that it comes out of the mouth of the dragon, which is a symbol of paganism and satanism. And there is a tongue-speaking, miracle-working movement in the pagan religion of this world, such as the Buddhists and the Satanists and others. But the frogs come out also of the mouth of the beast, and the beast is the church of Rome. There is a tongue-speaking, miracle-working movement in the Roman Catholic Church today called the Charismatic. And also, there is... It says that it's also coming from the false prophet. The false prophet. And now the false prophet, that would be the Protestantism, which is having the false prophets. They have gone away from the Bible. Now there is a problem when the pagans and the Catholicism and the Protestantism all speak in tongues. That means it, they are the same family. They have the same source. There is a spirit walking through these movements. But it's not the Holy Spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit of God. Now, are any of these three frogs teaching people to keep God's commandment? The answer is no. Are those genuine miracles? Yes, they are true, real miracles. Satan has supernatural power. He can make people sick. Question, who made Job sick? It was Satan. If you mark down Job 2 verse number 7, it tells us it's Satan who made who made Job sick. Was that fake sickness or real sickness? Friends, it was real. It was real sickness. Now, generally, God protects his people, but for Job, it was an exception. However, if a person is not completely surrendered to God, the devil might try to take control of them, of their life, and make people sick. Then they go to the faith healer or to the witch doctor, he prays over them or does the incantation and they fall over and they get healed. People say, oh, this is God's power. Friends, maybe not or maybe. We have to test the beliefs of the faith healer to see if they are in harmony with the Bible. If they don't harmonize with the Bible, if they don't harmonize with the law of God, then that faith healer is not using God's power. Many people take miracles as an excuse to obey God or to, to, to keep... Okay, they take, the, they take the excuse of miracles that they use to keep themselves in commandment-breaking churches. 
They say, ah, if on this church, even they are doing miracles, it means it's God's true church who told you. Even the devil can do miracles. Don't you think that the devil can work miracles so that he can keep you in error? He can keep you in a commandment-breaking church. And he can do it, friends. He has done it. It is happening all over. What are some of these miracles that will be wrought at the end time? Now, let's come with me in Revelation 13, verse number 13. Revelation 13, verse number 13. The Bible says, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire to come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Have you ever heard pastor church and people are crying, fire, fire. And deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. How was the world deceived? By miracles that Satan does. Now one of the miracles is bringing fire from heaven. Now where else do we read about fire coming down from heaven? Friends, in Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, and that was symbolizing the genuine, it was symbolizing, the, it was the genuine fire symbolizing the Holy Spirit. Revelation 13, verse number 13 say, speaks about the counterfeit fire from heaven. And that's a counterfeit to the genuine of Acts chapter number 2. You see, friends, today we are seeing a counterfeit gift of the Spirit, a counterfeit revival, counterfeit tongues, and counterfeit miracles, and many others. There is a spiritual revival in the Christian churches of the world today. There is a spirit being poured out. What's interesting is that the spirit is being poured up upon the Christian world that are not teaching people to obey God or to keep the Sabbath or to live or a holy lives. So friends, even more interesting that the spirit is being poured on the commandment breaking churches only. So either those things are not important anymore to God or there is a huge outpouring, outpouring of the counterfeit spirit, counterfeit tongues. The devil has taken many captive with the counterfeit tongues. But what does the Bible say about that? Now let's look at tongues in the Bible. The question, we will ask ourselves this question. What happened when the disciples received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now in Acts chapter 2 verse number 1 up to 4. It says and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. The Bible says and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them uh, utterance. Now. Pentecost was, was a, a, a festival at that time celebrated 50 days after the Passover. Now during this feast, devout Jews came from all different places of the world so that they can celebrate. It was a timely opportunity to bestow the, the gift of tongues because there were coming people from different places. And at least 15 different languages were represented. On mark down Acts chapter 2 verse number 19. Verse number 9 up to 11. So visitors from different places, they came to Pentecost at that time. Now, question. What did these foreign Jews experience when the Holy Spirit was poured out? Now, these were guys coming from different places. You can read the whole Acts chapter 2. Now, what did they experience? The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 verse number 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse number 5, And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So it means that there was different people from different places, speaking different languages. Now, let's continue. Verse number 6. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because, now read those verses, those, those words in yellow, every man had them speak in his own language. So these guys were speaking and every man was hearing them speak. 
speak in his own language. That's the true gift of tongue. The Bible says in verse 7, And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not these all these Galileans, which are, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Now, these guys were speaking in tongues, but that is in other language. The word tongue means language. You have ever heard somebody saying, this is my mother tongue. Does he mean that generator style that we hear every time? He was he's meaning his own language. Are we together, friends? And they said, and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? So they were hearing in their own languages. And that's the true gift of tongues. Now, they were hearing the gospel in their own... Now, the tongue was given for the spread of the gospel. And what we are doing now is we are using the gift of tongue. I am a Mkoncho, you are another language. If I come here and I speak my language, it's a few of you who will understand me. The Bible says, we do hear them speak in our tongue. Now, God has given us a gift so that we can speak English. I can speak English, you can listen. And you are understanding, you are fathoming the things. That's one of the gifts of tongues. The Bible says, And we do hear them speak in our, lang in our tongues the wonderful works of God. They were hearing them speak the wonderful works of God. You see, friends, sometimes the gift of tongue is referred to as the heavenly, the heavenly language that is understood only by God. That's what people say. Oh, those who have the gift of interpretation. Now God's word is clear that both the disciples and those who are listening understood what was being preached, which was the wonderful works of God. They did not babble and like generator like, to, like today's churches. They did not do that. They were speaking and people were healing. And that's the true gift of tongues. I want you to see the example of what we hear today in the churches today. You can listen to this. Have you heard he's saying holy fire, but that's not true. It's not holy fire, it's the fire or the counterfeit of the true fire. That is a counterfeit. Satan himself, because what did you hear? The guys in Acts chapter 2, they had the wonderful works of God. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 23, if they are the whole church, be come together into one place and all speak with the tongues. And there come in those who are unlearned or oh, unbelievers. Will they not say that they are mad? Imagine coming to this place here and all of us, we are speaking different languages. How do you feel? Or maybe you come here to listen to God's word and I speak my mother tongue. How many of you will understand? It says, verse 24, but if anyone is proclaiming God's message when some unbelievers or ordinary people come in, they will be convinced of their sin by what they hear. They will be judged by all they hear. It's only when you can hear. But the bubbling, the generator style, you don't hear anything. Now, question, which spiritual gift became a subject of controversy in the Corinth, Corinthian church? Paul writes in, uh, in 1 Corinthians 14, verse number 1 and 2. It says, Desire spiritual gift, but rather that ye may prophesy. Now, prophesy means preach. Tell others to learn. 
For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, that is another language, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. So if you speak, I come here and I'm speaking my own language, it's as if I'm speaking, it's only God who is understanding me. That's what he is trying to mean. But now, the church in Corinth, there was many people from different places, and they were, it was a chaotic place. People were speaking, everybody could speak his own language, and they could not understand themselves. So Paul here was trying to tell them, let's have at least one language that we will be using. Now, what does the Bible say about speaking in a tongue that is not understood? That generator style, that jaga jaga jaga, and that, that, that style. How does God, or how, what does the Bible say about it? In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 19, the Bible says, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also. Than how many words? 10,000 words in the unknown tongue. So the purpose, God's purpose for the tongue or the language is to communicate and to teach his truth. How would you feel if uh, you come here and I'm speaking in, in my own language? Would you understand? Nothing. You would feel unfulfilled. You feel like you have wasted your time. You feel like, eh, why doesn't he remain silent? So you would would rather speak how many words? Five words with understanding and then that we may teach than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. And now for them, they pass, they speak, whee, more than 10,000, you see them sweat. What was one of the main characteristics of ancient Babylon? You see, friends, the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter number 11, verse 7 and 9, let us go down and confound, that is confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech, therefore is the name called Babel. So the Tower of Babel is the place where languages were confused, were first confused. The Hebrew word for Babel is Babylon. So Babel meaning confusion is the same as Babylon. Now one of the most characteristics of spiritual Babylon is the confusing of tongues, the confusion of tongues. And God, and confusion is not of God. They are just like one family. So, the true gift of tongues is to enable someone to share the gospel to those of another language. But I was at university, I was having some friends who used to go and practice speaking in tongues. And I asked them, Brother, do you understand what even you are speaking? He said, no, it's only the Holy Spirit who understands. Ask them, what if you are cursing yourself? What if you are saying, God, curse me? What if you are saying, God, you are not good? You don't understand. You pray and you yourself, you don't understand what you are praying. You better pray with your understanding. And you also speak with your understanding. Look at this one. It's a manifestation of of that fire which is not true. Is that right? It's just like as if they are demon possessed. Now this is a man called Ben Hin. I've just seen an example of the counterfeit fire and he's saying it's glorious. Saying it's fire. Now that's not the Holy Spirit working here. When people fall like on the ground, they fall like that on the ground and they wreathe. That's demon possession. Ben Hin does not teach people to keep the Sabbath. And more than that, he communicates with the spirit of the dead, which the Bible condemns. So, we know that this power he's using is not the power of God. The Bible says that the world will be deceived by the miracles at the end time. And how shall we test the miracles? It's only by the Bible. Now, look at this. Look at this guy. 
This is the Sam Ben Hin. You may not understand this. I don't either. Have you heard that you you don't understand? I don't understand either. saying take it as if the Holy Spirit is to be given just now look at this in Uganda here Let's look at this one. He's talking about fire. He's saying it is fire, but that's not the Holy Spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit working. That's demon possession. Somebody writhing and looking like as if he has gotten demons on his head. Look at this one. I wonder if that is being free. You are just being dragged to the ground as if you are being dragged down to hell. Look at this one. that guy so these are the counterfeits the counterfeits the test we should use is the Bible by the miracles they do or by the Bible we should use the Bible to test them tomorrow we shall see that the Holy Spirit is not just a power or force that you should push the Holy Spirit is God God should use you not you using it are we together friends so by the way they do miracles but they are genuine miracles but they are not real from God they are from the devil himself so which one should we obey or should we believe in should we believe them because of their miracles or because of what the Bible says you see many Christians have turned from the Bible as the test of truth and they make tongues, miracles, or uh, emotions that are the taste of truth. And that's dangerous. One time I was preaching somewhere and somebody said, Do you have the, the, the Holy Spirit? I said, Yes, I have the Holy Spirit. I've been teaching and God has been helping us. People have been combating. He said, First show me. Ask him, How should I show you? 
He says, speak in tongues. I said, how, where, where is the Bible says that if you have the Holy Spirit, then you should speak in tongues. And he wanted me to bubble like a generator, and I told him, that's not true. So the devil can perform counterfeit miracles, and if he can confirm people in unbelief by doing so, then he can do so. Now, the question is, is it possible for someone to think that they are using God's power and actually be using the power of the devil? As is yes, friends. We are going to answer that from Matthew 7, verse number 20 up to 23. And we will read one of the most shocking things that Christ has ever said. You can mark down the passage. The Bible says, in Matthew 7, verse 20 up to 23, it says, Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So, by the way, one of these fruits is obedience to God. Those would have to be Christians. They call Jesus their Lord. And Christ says, anyone that says, Lord, Lord, is not the one who will be served. Those who just say, Lord, Lord, and they don't obey. It says many. How many? It's many, the minority or the majority. The, ma the majority says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in, their, in thy name? And in thy name have cast out demons? And in thy name done many wonderful works. It says many. How many? Many is many. It means more many. Many is the majority. These Christians prophesied in Jesus' name. That's one of the gifts of the Spirit. These Christians say, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We spoke tongues in your name. We healed in your name. We cast demons in your name. Out demons. Evidently, these people were not using the power of Jesus Christ. By the way, does it take supernatural power to cast out devils? Oh yes, it surely does. You can't cast out devils in your own strength. Apparently, these professed Christians were actually using the devil's power and did not even know it. Uh, using the devil's power and they don't even know it. I heard of a man who had been attending a charismatic church where they spoke in tongues and cast out demons. After attending for some time, some of the church members said he needed deliverance. He said you need deliverance from demons. Well, he didn't know that he has been having demons in his body. He didn't know that he has demons so that he needed uh, deliverance. But he agreed that they can deliver him from these demons. So they took him aside and began praying over him uh, with hands laid upon him and suddenly he lost his strength and he fell right in the, mid in the middle of them. And what happened? When he fell down, then the devil started coming out, going out of him. Each devil sounding like a gun shoot. And then a great fire came, went out of him. I don't know, that must have been the biggest devil. I don't know, or what. And as the Christians kept praying over him, the holy anointing from God, so-called, came down and he claimed that he has been filled with the Spirit. After that, the man spoke in tongues. He spoke in, in tongues. By the way, that man didn't keep the Sabbath. In fact, he said that the Holy Spirit told him, you don't need to keep the Sabbath, you don't need to obey God. You can know right there that that was not the Holy Spirit's voice. That was Satan's voice. Now don't miss this, friends. The man had gone to the church, not to the faith healer, not to the witch doctor, but a church. To be delivered from the devils, instead of being delivered from the devils, he had become demon or possessed. You see, friends, the devil doesn't cast out the devil. Or does he? he? He doesn't. What is called demon or deliverance from demon is actually turns out to be demon possession or demon demonstration demonstrating themselves in another way. They retract your demons, the ones you had, the small ones, and now they give you seven more. They just add you. Let 
me finish this passage in verse 23. The Bible says, And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. If Jesus knew, never knew them, whose power were they using? Are using for the devil. And there is only one kind of supernatural power that they must have been using, and that's the devil's power. Many at the end time will be using the power of the devil, and they will not realize it. They have what we call holy laughter. Oh, look at this. Look at the madness. That's holy laughter. So as if the Christian world has gone mad, they have everything that you can imagine. And I wonder which Holy Spirit is that. That must be the devil. Now look at this one. And they call that the Holy Spirit. As demon possessed, you sweat as if it were drops. You just sweat water. Just being demon possessed. And many people think that's the Holy Spirit's working. The Holy Spirit does not work that way. It's a humble spirit. It says, Wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the 